Can't you sedate him or something? Big shocker. Dad's depressed. Wow. Every minute of every day is booked. Hi, Dr. House. I think I caught what my dad has. The rhino thing. Does that hurt? A little. It's in my chest, too. Feels good. The very excited to be reacting to House MD Season 3, Episode 4, Lines in the Sand. On this channel, we are reacting to all 177 House videos, and this will be Episode 68. Let's see if I can get the diagnosis before House does, as a doctor working in London. Show me what you want for lunch. Still drawing those lines instead of looking at the cards. More juice? He has to ask for it. Adam! He's choking. To pass mac and cheese. What is mac and cheese choke proof now? Does it not have to be swallowed? Do we just store it in the side of our mouths like some kind of chipmunk? Seems like this patient that the case is about though has autistic spectrum disorder. He's clearly overwhelmed by the sounds and stimulation, struggling to communicate his needs and it looks like he is developmentally delayed. Some other signs that a child might have autism include if they don't respond to their name or they line up their blocks in a straight line and are annoyed when someone disturbs them. They like routine and will notice when a different route on the road is taken and get upset by it. Is that for everyone though? Definitely not. There's a massive range in autistic spectrum disorder from very high functioning like Elon Musk all the way down to someone who's totally dependent on all needs like washing or clothing themselves or even going to the toilet. Or maybe the patient has something else entirely. Let's find out. 10 year old boy screams for his life for no reason. He's autistic, severely autistic. No. Study this kid. Heard him scream a million times. In 10 years of caring for him, this is the first time they brought him to a hospital. He clutched his chest, BP was elevated. Maybe there was chest pain. I had a date last night. She screamed. Should we spend $100,000 testing her? Of course not. This isn't a veterinary hospital. Zing! Oh, just when Thorman thought he was coming out of brain damage, he found something worse. Emotional damage. EMOTIONAL DAMAGE! It sounds like this patient had some chest pain but couldn't exactly explain how. The team are thinking it could be related to allergens, so they want to check his home. House thinks it could be lupus or parasites, so wants to do a PET scan, stool and antibody test, and I think they're all about as likely to be right as a foreman is to spend the night without crying himself to sleep. What this shows though is how non-specific chest pain can be. When most people think of chest pain, they worry about the heart. More commonly though, it's actually from the rib cage or the stomach. It can even come from the lungs. Signs that it could be from the heart though are if it gets worse on exertion, if it's a heaviness or squeezing pain, if it radiates up to the jaw or or the left arm, or if the person has a long history of diabetes, high blood pressure, or high cholesterol. If you have any of those signs, and especially if you're over 40, then get checked out. I used Metamucil, like the doctor told me, but I saw something in the toilet I couldn't identify. I wrapped it in tissue paper, so... So you could take a look. Every doctor in history has been presented with unsealed feces at one point in their career. It happened to me in my second year as a doctor, just when I thought I'd gotten used to things and I couldn't be surprised anymore. 42 year old male patient came up to me with an open stool pot in the middle of A&E. He said, doctor, look at this, I need help now. As he shoved it within sniffing distance of my face, I wasn't even seeing him at this point, I was just walking past. At least it was in a need to be fair and not the supermarket. Can't you sedate him or something? Big shocker. Dad's depressed. Wow. Every minute of every day is booked. Hi, Dr. House. I think I caught what my dad has. The rhino thing. Does that hurt? A little. It's in my chest, too. Feels good. The all the tests are normal. But thanks to Dr. Cuddy, I don't have an office, so I have to work here. Is House running a differential in the clinic reception? Who cares about confidentiality, disrupting other staff, or this underage teenage stalker who seems to keep finding him? 
If you're wondering why House's office is unusable, it's because he bled on the floor and Cuddy changed the carpet. How dare she? He wants the literally bloody carpet back. Why exactly? I have about as much idea as a hippo in a techno rave. It is surprising though that all the tests are negative so far. That means whatever it is that's causing the screaming and the lines in the sand must be very subtle. Could the lines indicate that he got ill after going to the seaside? Like were there parasites in the sand that he contracted or that he'd seen worms in the toilet before? I know this patient seems severely disabled but I would bet he's trying to communicate something very intelligent. Some patients with autistic spectrum disorder have a savant syndrome which can give them amazing abilities or talents like super memory or perfect artistic skills. Very interested to see how this plays out but a question for you smart people. What percentage of people have autistic spectrum disorder? Answers down below. Do what you want. Not replacing your carpet. Go up his rear and get a smear. Adam. So what makes fluid fill the lining of a kid's lungs? Is his heart okay? No. Echo suggested a conduction abnormality. EKG confirmed it. Pleural fluid was an exudate. Microbiology showed no organisms in the fluid, so forget infection. It just leaves cancer. Get a lung biopsy. Very interesting. So this patient's fluid in the lungs came up as an exudate, not a transudate. What does that mean? Well, exudates are thick because of cells and other substances that have slowly discharged from the blood vessels. That can happen because of pneumonia, cancer, viruses, or autoimmune diseases. Transudates are because of fluid squeezing through the tissue membranes because of the high fluid pressure in the vessels. That can be due to heart failure, low albumin, a type of kidney disease called nephrotic syndrome, and liver failure as well. The patient has the first one, which is an exudate, so cancer is a possibility, but along with the heart changes, I would suggest maybe an autoimmune condition is more likely. It may also be that the autoimmune condition could be affecting his brain, causing him to act differently and be incorrectly diagnosed with autism when he doesn't have it. Kawasaki's could cause that. Also microscopic polyangitis, Wagner's or Church Strauss, also possibilities. I'm going with vasculitis for my first diagnostic guess though. Your girlfriend called the clinic 15 times looking for you today. She's a stalker. Lung biopsies usually come back negative, so biopsy a lymph node under the arm. And just to be safe. You mind? Can somebody shut that kid up? Uh, no cancer. These aren't lymph cells. Then what are they? Liver cells? I would give up a whole month's pay just to spend a week with the actual Dr. House if he were real. Get to see him steal a patient's anesthetic, run his differentials in the main entrance and maximally annoy the hospital bosses. And that's just day one. What's even more interesting than House walking into a stationary object though is this patient has a liver cells in his armpit. How does that happen without them being cancer? Cancer cells spread by invading the blood vessels and hitchhiking to the distant towns that are our lungs, brain and lymph nodes, but this isn't that. Something has displaced these liver cells and we need to know what. In medical terms, we call this ectopic liver tissue or choristoma, and it's actually found in the gallbladder and on occasion can be in the spleen. It's a developmental abnormality that causes the liver to migrate when it's forming as early as in the embryo. The thing is, the second liver can be affected by things that damage the primary liver like viruses, high cholesterol or iron, for example. This reminds me of an actual case of a 70 year old woman who had abdominal pain. She had a scan which showed a mass in her stomach and that ended up obstructing the bowel, meaning that she needed to have surgery. When they removed the mass, they realized it was an extra part of her liver that was causing the blockage. Madness. Wow, liver cells under his arm. Our 10 year old boy does not have a drinking problem or cirrhosis. So you figure they slip the kid a Mickey so they don't have to deal. Do a biopsy to confirm cirrhosis. Your patient is being rushed to cardiac ICU. Is it Fee -fee? Please. He's stable for the moment. It's not his liver, his heart, or his lungs. 
the calcium carbonate in his stool. What a roller coaster! First he has liver cells in his arm, then House thinks his parents are spiking him, and now we think diarrhea medicine is what's messing him up. We know calcium carbonate can produce white stools, but what if something else is doing that instead, like blockage of the bile duct, for example? That'd be way too obvious though, like challenging the President of the United States with a very difficult question of which ice cream he chose. Chocolate chocolate chip. Oh. So why do we give calcium carbonate for people with diarrhea? Calcium reduces the water content of stool, meaning it transits slower in the bowel than it would otherwise. One thing to note though, is if you have temporary diarrhea, like from food poisoning, then it's probably best not to use treatments to harden your stool. That's because the diarrhea is produced by the body for a reason, to get rid of the pathogen. When you use something like loperamide or calcium carbonate, that slow transit in the gut, it also slows clearance of the virus, something to definitely keep in mind. Contrary to popular belief, a good doctor equally knows when not to use medicine as when to use it. Calcium carbonate's also what's in chalk. This kid's got pica. Take him to a buffet, he's gonna eat the table. Pressure treated wood used to contain arsenic. Hansel, get samples of the gingerbread house. Bag everything. He has pica! That is a very interesting feeding disorder. It's when usually kids eat things with no nutritional value. I'm not talking nibbling, I'm talking full on consuming chalk, wood, ice, soap, or classically, soil. Now, kids usually stick random stuffs in their mouths as that's how they explore the world, but this is totally different. Pika happens in kids over two where they aren't accidentally ingesting things anymore. It's associated with developmental conditions like autistic spectrum disorder, but can also happen with iron deficiency, anemia, depression, pregnancy, OCD, and schizophrenia. With how organized the dad's list is and how scheduled their life is, I feel like he must have OCD. How does that relate to the lines in the sand? Not quite sure, definitely need more clues. Jimson weed. Found a small patch of it in his backyard. Jimson weed contains atropine. Treatment for Jimson weed OD is physostigmine. Kid's got heart issues, two don't mix. We better make sure that's what he's got. I need to know if you ate this, Adam. Show me what you ate. No way! Right at the start I mentioned that the lines in the sand could be parasites in the sand but I thought it was at the beach, not a sandbox. Sandboxes are teeming with parasites from raccoon roundworm to toxic caro and toxoplasmosis. 2008 study on this exact topic found that there were nearly 2,000 times more bacteria, mold and yeast per square inch of a sandbox compared to a door handle of a public restroom. So my second diagnostic guess will be raccoon roundworm. It causes fever, irritable mood, uncontrolled movement, seizures, and balance problems. Treatment would be with albendazole. My last diagnostic guess is gonna have to be Toxocara, which is also present in sandboxes. Sandboxes are like outdoor free-for-all cat litter petri dishes. Good for the immune system. Adam? Was there an earthquake when you were in Fresno? Yeah, a little one. It it's not love. You have a spore in your brain. Wanting to have sex with you, so I'll just... The spore stopping? You'll probably live. Damn. House is smart enough both to know about coccidioidomycosis here, which is 100% real, and convinces stalker she has it when she probably doesn't. You see, spores and parasites like this in immunocompetent patients generally just get cleared without many problems. People who actually get brain infections and personality changes like House is describing are the ones with seriously weakened immune systems. People with HIV who've had chemotherapy or on immunosuppressive meds. But the only thing stronger than this girl's immune system is her sex drive, so I think it's unlikely she would get this parasite. Now take us back to our plant eater. Seeing them all the time. Telling us exactly what was wrong with him. Hello, my buddies. It's worms swimming in his eye. Raccoon roundworms are not excreted by their human host. Laser photocoagulation to fix the eye and a high dose of benzamidazole to kill the worms. Wow, raccoon roundworms. I will take that one. I was thinking about parasites pretty early as well, so very pleased with that performance. What's even more pleasing though is that the child had an obsession with that game that he gave house at the end there, 
and he let go of that after he felt like he was understood. That led House to let go of his obsession with the bloodstained carpet. Earlier House said he envied the child because he doesn't have to deal with social conventions and Wilson just said that House sees himself in this patient. But House doesn't have autistic spectrum disorder, he's just himself. Incredible though that this patient touched him so much. Big fan of this episode, I'd say 8 out of 10 entertainment, 7.5 out of 10 accuracy, 8 out of 10 diagnosis. This doesn't make full sense though until you watch the previous one where we figure out how House met his stalker. Watch here now.